G'day gang, and welcome back to an episode of Upcoming Attractions. As always, I'm your host, Matt Vella, and with me today is a very special guest, Zoheb Ali from Midnight Double Feature. How you doing, buddy? Hello, man. Thank you so much for having me back. I really appreciate it. I'm uh, excited to talk to you uh, after a very long time <laughs> and uh, talk about the show. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So, so guys, today we're going to be talking full spoilers of Miss Marvel season one. We're going to be talking about the whole lot. If you don't want spoilers, uh, first of all, you're late because we're late to recording this. So what are you doing? Get onto it. And, and yeah, we're really excited about it. We're recording this one in particular uh, because Zoe messaged me. And he's like, dude, I got to talk about this show. Uh, get me on the show. So totally excited to get through that. Uh, before we do though, just a quick little bit of housekeeping for those who don't know, um, you know, may have noticed upcoming attractions have been gone for a while. Yes, I haven't been the best. Um, and we are releasing some like lost episodes, as we call it. But uh, we, we got to bring you something new to keep you keep you uh, excited for us to return. So here we go. Let's get straight into it. Um, dude, before we get into your overall thoughts of the show, um, I know something you're particularly passionate about is um, the representation aspect of Miss Marvel and um, your personal connection to it. So do you want to just tell me a little bit about that before we get um, into the, yeah. the actual show itself? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, like, that's probably the biggest reason why I messaged you asking to come on. Like, let's talk about it. What other, how many other brown Muslim guys do you know? I mean, no, you, probably know, you probably know heaps. But anyways. I mean, I'm, I'm from Blacktown, so there's yeah, a couple right. around. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh. But no, I, I mean, um, look, so when I did, when I messaged you, this is how long it's been, right? So I messaged you just after episode four aired. Um, and, you know, obviously now we're a couple of weeks out from the finale, so it's been a very long time. And I've happen to see how the rest of the show played out but um the, none of none of the the plot elements or anything like that have it's funny uh, this i have such a weird relationship with this show watching through it because none of the plot elements or like how things ended up or how um kamala's story factored into how i felt watching it in terms of like a um like how how it brought about the representation angle of things so um, I was watching this and I was like, man, like this, I, I feel, I feel seen. <laughs> um, and it's funny because like, you know, this is how, um, and, and I don't want to, you know, put myself in the shoes of others, but I remember when Black Panther came out and it was such a huge thing for mm. young African Americans, right? I mean, you know, like how, how often do you see an African American superhero in film? Um. Like, I mean, outside of Blade, but like, you know, actually like embracing the African culture, you know, and like, um, how, how often do you see that kind of cultural representation in a move in a mainstream movie or a mainstream TV show put out by a, probably the biggest, one of the biggest corporations out there. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of wild. And, um, I started it. Here's my thing. I wasn't initially going to watch this. I was going to skip this all together. Um, the reason for that is because the trailers didn't really wow me. Um, and I heard it was more sort of like targeted towards a younger audience, which it, absolu which it absolutely is. Totally. Yeah. And um, I, uh, you know, like it, it, it dropped and I didn't watch it for like two days because I was like, oh, I'm not really into it. And then like, you know, one day I was just bored and I was like, let me, let me watch this first episode. And man, that first episode absolutely rocked. It might be one of the best probably one of the best episodes in the entire season i mean that that first episode yeah. um just in terms of like introducing us to the world and the aesthetic of it and stuff like that but like not only that just the um just the little things like kamala's um relationship with her parents and the way her mother would uh i guess baby her um and you know the muslim culture and the restrictions of the muslim culture um <clears throat> And, uh, you know, like not, not all of this is, not all of this can apply to Peter Parker, right? Let's say Peter Parker is 10 years younger. He's actually got parents, <laughs> um, you know, like not all of this, you know, come like, you know, don't go to AvengerCon applies, right? I mean, of course that does, but then you also have like the cultural elements of it, like, you know, Kamala not being able to wear skimpy clothes, right? I mean, like, yes, I know that applies also to 
Caucasian families. <laughs> but I mean, it, it actually it goes more so to the Muslim slash Islamic culture as well, because um, you know, there there is this whole thing about covering up and you know, Western families, Western Muslim families like those living in America and in Australia don't wear the burqa and stuff like that but there there is sort of like a nice middle ground you know Mm. there's a nice little sort of like yeah a a middle ground Uh, but then there's also um there's also the the mosque element of as well and the way that the mosque is persecuted by law enforcement authorities uh in this namely damage control but you know i love that damage control also mentioned the fbi um, you know, and and there, there's a whole element of that, but then also when they're in the mosque, I think it's episode two, might be episode one, when Nakir and 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 Kamala are in the mosque and they're separated from the men because that that is true. There, there's always like a um a quote a partition. You know, before we do get to the partition, um, you know, separating the females from the males and. There's always the whole yes, the males always get like the better part of the mosque than the females, and the the air conditioning's better, and it's it's kind of ah. insane how on the ball and how crazy accurate every every single element of the Muslim culture that is portrayed is. Um, Bishake Ali is the uh, creator, uh, no relation. Um, and uh you know i was listening to an interview with her and she was like man like we when i got when i got hired for this i made sure um that myself and the writer's room really made this as authentic as possible or tried to feel make it feel as authentic as possible um and it absolutely does you know like down to down to the halal kebab kebabs like you know like the, and like you know the the, the kebab guys like you know yeah. like it, it's it's just it's just so rich and vibrant um, and full of cultural energy, like even um, Eid, right? I think it's episode two when they go to the Eid festival behind the mosque, which, by the way, happens here as well. If you go to um, the Rudy Hill Mosque, <laughs> um, you know, there's the Eid festival that happens behind the mosque as well. There's rides, there's, um, you know, amusements and stuff like that. Um, and also the cliques within the Muslim community, Indian, Pakistani Muslim community, um, you know, we do get like the little mean girls sort of like section of like, here are the plastics, <laughs> here are the little, you know, whatever. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna say it's, it's very mean girls that, that moment. It's and so it's accurate. so well done. Yeah. It's so, so accurate. Um, you know, you've got the aunties that are, that are gossiping and all that shit. Like that, that all happens. Um, you know, I, um, I watched this entire series with my parents. Um, and I didn't know from episode one what direction this was going to go in um in terms of like uh p- p- particularly uh Maniba, who is um who who is uh Kamala's mother so Maniba is Kamala, Kamala's mother and you know she has this sort of disdain for her mother and her grandmother particularly the great grandmother um who quote betrayed the family um and you know uh, you you know my sort of recent personal history and i'll say it here on the podcast like i kind Mm. of sort of did a bit of a i kind of like separated from my family very recently uh relatively recently sort of thing so like you know i i declared that i didn't really believe in religion and you know i think it's okay for someone who is 28 years old to choose (laughs) what they believe in um but there are you know cultural sort of like um there are cultural uh, things that uh, families stick to, you know, and um, people think that the values of a person should align with religious values and they're one and the same when they're actually not, in my opinion. Hmm. Um, so when it comes down to that moment between Maniba and her mother and they're talking about, you know, you could have, you know, like, you know, like I, I always loved you, like, you know, like there's always that whole you know, like you left me kind of thing. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm watching it with my parents in the background. And I'm just like, Oh God, like this is kind of, <laughs> this is kind of real, man. Um, But like, you know, not, not only that, but like the, you know, we'll, we'll get to just how, um, how fleshed out the villains are in this, in this, um, cause they're not really that fleshed out, but I, <laughs> 
I, I do dig the the parallels um between what are they called again? The the um uh the clan clandestines. The clandestines. Yes. I, I do dig the parallels between the clandestines being um well, you know, like they them being like this kind of like shrapnel or um splintered group of from like the rest of like whoever whoever this race is kind of thing. So mm. um I, I like that they're kind of the outsiders. I like that this show is pretty much all about the outsiders. Um and uh you know just watching this show kind of like really made me think about myself <laughs> made me think about my place in the world uh and whether religion should um play a part in my life um and i know it's a stupid marvel show and it absolutely is but um i didn't think at any point it would it would have that effect on me um when i started the show and it absolutely did um yeah, man. L- let me ask yeah. you, because yeah. so, so guys, we will get into talking about superpowers and all the comic book stuff, but I, I really want to dive in on and, and this topic with, with Zoe here, because I know it is, uh, it's important to you. And I believe you bring a unique perspective that not the typical Marvel fanboy would have. So I think that's interesting. Uh, I've got two questions for you. The first one is um, going back to you, going back to you watching this show with your Muslim parents. Um, First of all, what did they think of the show and uh, how did they react to it? Because I'm guessing, I know your dad's watched a few Marvel stuff, but like I, your mum's not a bit much of a Marvel fan, is she? No, dad loves Marvel. So dad dad loves Marvel. I take him to watch every Marvel movie, um, except we haven't seen Thor Love and Thunder yet because I'm not rushing out to see Thor and <laughs> Love and Thunder for a second time yet at the moment. Um but you know, like that, dad, dad loves Marvel. Like he's all up in the end game and shit. Like you know, he loves that. Mm. Uh, but mum, <clears throat> mum, she's not well versed in superheroes at all, um, if any. Um, you know, the only dramatic TV show she's ever watched is Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know, like she's she's not um that well versed in it. Um, so starting this show with both of them. I mean, they were in from the beginning. I mean, like once we got, once we got Kamala referring to her grandmother as Nani, which is exactly what I call my grandmother. Um, like you know, like it's 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 so again, it's so ingrained and it feels so rich and legitimate. I think legitimate might be the the word to use because, you know, if 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 I'm you know, my parents have been Muslim for how like you know for their entire lives, right? So like they know they can smell a fake, right? They can smell mm. when their uh be- their leg is being pulled. Um, so you know, like they they absolutely adored it and they look forward to it every week. Um, and you know, w- while I felt awkward and guilty, um, sort of watching the show at points, especially when it comes to my neighbor and her mother um and sort of like running away from family um kind of thing um i don't i don't know if they did we haven't had that conversation (laughs) um we didn't have that conversation i don't think we will um but i mean look it's just the way things go sometimes and but but like ultimately they they loved it i think um we can talk about the end i think ultimately you know i'll talk about the show and what i think of the show ultimately i think my criticisms of the show tie into what they think as well. So I guess I'll just say that I did think it was rushed towards the end. And I think they could also feel that it was a little rushed. Like it's like, mm. oh, Maniba is already accepting of the fact that she's a superhero. That's a little quick. Like, you know, it's like, um, it's just. Let's, it, it, let's it's, get into that, man. Um, yeah, yeah. My biggest criticism with the show actually ties into a few instances here and there where they they kind of skip over some important plot uh, no not plot points but like character moments where motivations feel like they can change rather quickly the the worst of which is um when they go overseas sorry which country do they go pakistan. to pakistan right when they get when they catch the plane to pakistan so the episode ends uh, before they leave with oh we have to go on the did you see the train you have to come to pakistan and then the next scene of the first episode, they're on the plane, the parents are with it, and there's, I can't tell you where we're going. It's like, I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. No middle-class family just picks up and goes overseas the mm. next day. Like, that's thousands of dollars in flights. That's, 
Like I would have, I really wish the writers came up with either A, a scene where she has to convince her parents to go or B, maybe they would have done a scene where or she, they would have found another way to take her to Pakistan, you know? And I get like, they probably wanted the family all there, but like there, there's, there's better ways they could have written around it. Um, I'm guessing maybe, maybe they had to rush it out or so. I, I don't know what it is, but things like that, like kind of ruin the immersion for me. And then again, like you said, at the end, it really feels like they rushed through some of that stuff. Like, at the start of the show, her mother is like, I don't trust you um, and you're a really responsible girl. And by the end of the show, she's like, I trust you, even though now she's sneaking out of the house, getting in fights, having little superhero battles. Like, hang on, as a mom, now you should be trusting her even less, right? Like, I know they went through some emotional character moments, but. Well, you can absolutely yeah. see what the character arc for Maniba is, right? I mean, the acceptance oh, yeah. of her of her daughter being the person that she's always meant to be but like it it doesn't it doesn't flow in six episodes i don't think you personally need 18 episodes in a season yeah um, but i think i think but 10 ma- maybe eight? i think 10, 10 or 8 i think 8 yeah. might be the sweet spot kind of thing um it's just it's just strange that you know you can't have and again i don't think that much time passes between episode one and episode six like you know what i mean in the world Mm. i mean obviously i'm you know six weeks past for us but like in the world like i don't think that too much time passes between avenger con and the showdown at the school so it doesn't necessarily make a, a ton of sense for I, I can understand her father just to an extent. I don't think, uh, you know, not as much as it kind of portrayed to be, but certainly probably not Maniba. But, you know, it's strange because Maniba does go on this journey as well, right? I mean, she kind of goes on this whole path with her mother kind of thing. And um, the mother sort of like telling her that, you know, we're family, um, mm. you know, we're, we're important to each other, you know, no matter what kind of thing. So but her yeah, character really- is surprisingly three-dimensional for that type of character like generally those type of side characters are the ones that get sort of swept aside they're just a figure of authority but like you can relate to their parents a lot like there are many times it's like hey listen here kid you're being a little brat i'm on your parents side in this part you know you shouldn't be sneaking out at night or or whatever or you know that scene where like her dad dresses up as the hulk and they offer her a costume. She's like, no. Like, I really felt sad for the dad. Like, he was heartbroken. Um, and that's really well done how they how they did those characters. Um, I think, I think, look, we, we sort of hinted at before, but um I wanted to talk about our overall thoughts, but I feel like we've kind of it's pretty much implied. We both like the show, I think it's fair to say. Um, but we I both think, acknowledge there are some flaws, correct? Yeah, I think I think there's flaws in every Marvel show. I think this is the best Marvel show. I'm just going to go ahead and say that because um, there's it's in my there's, top three. I'm I definitely biased, obviously. I'm definitely biased. Um, but I mean, it like, might be in my top two. I think it's the best world building, and I think mm. it's the most well-rounded show. Right. You know. Um, just I don't know. Like I, I'm very again. I'm biased too because like I love One Division outside of thing. it being a Marvel show as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Here's the thing though. Um, I'll see, but I really like Loki. Um, but like mm. here's the thing <laughs> for me. I wanted to spend more time with Kamala and her friends and her family interacting than the actual Marvel stuff. Um, and I think that is. I think that kind of <laughs> echoes. Um, because I've listened to a few podcasts talk about this. Um. But like in that first episode when we're actually with her at school and you know she's <laughs> she she's meeting Kamran for the first time and there's all this like you know back and forth with um with uh god damn it I'm forgetting I'm forgetting what's 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 the white boy Bruno Jesus Christ Bruno yeah we don't very talk much about like Kamran I forgot Bruno's name mm-hmm. um, but you know th- like all of that is so much more interesting and her driving lesson. I mean, you know, all of this is so much more interesting to see her navigate this coming of age in a world of superheroes sort of thing. Mm. You know, like where superheroes exist, where Carol Danvers is flying around somewhere in the universe um, and she's absolutely obsessed with her and people are going to AvengerCon and stuff like that. You know, that first episode hits so high for me because we get so much of that and so little of the superhero stuff. Um, like I said, I'm not saying that 
I'm not saying that you know there should be zero superhero stuff. It's just I think that first episode walks the line between TV and superhero stuff very well. Um, I would say of all the Marvel shows, um, this Miss Marvel and One Division are the only Marvel shows that take full advantage of being a TV show. Like when I watch Hawkeye or Moon Knight, I, I look at them and I go, this should be a movie. Like it feels just like a long movie. Right. But like, like One Division suits a TV show because it's doing the sitcom format. So that gets a free pass, right? But what Miss Marvel does so well that I feel like the other shows don't do as well is one of the advantages of television is you can spend more time with your characters and like, especially the supporting characters. And that's why it's so well good at world building. You know, you get to meet the community. It's the, the Jersey city is a character and more specifically, like the, the Muslim community is a character. Like if this is a movie, we would not get the mosque politics of someone running for, was it mosque president or mosque something like board. that? Mo- yeah, that's right. On the board. And um, we wouldn't have time for all that because it's like, Oh no, it's been 20 minutes. We need to have a fight scene so we can like, people can eat their popcorn and stuff, you know? So I feel like this is one of the only Marvel shows that like I go, oh, okay, this couldn't be a movie. This has to be a right. show. Otherwise you don't get to do this stuff. Right. Um, and, you're, and you're absolutely right. All that like coming of age stuff is the best stuff of it because I think because they have the time to do it. Like the problem with some of the Spider-Man movies is like they want to do John Hughes, but they don't have the time to do that and be superhero film. Like, I feel like all three Spider-Man movies are meant to be John Hughes inspired, but only homecoming feels like yeah. it's really doing that. We're only seeing the, the, the kids in high school and, and all that. So yeah, that's, that'd be a, that'd be a big part. And uh, one of my um, favorite sort of, sorry to interrupt you. No, one, one of my favorite stretches of this entire show is um, the first half hour maybe 20 minutes or so of episode five called time and again which is the um it's just this sort of like elongated flashback where where we see the partition actually taking place and we see we we meet the great grandmother and the person that she has uh, eventually fell in love with hassan um and you know there's this uniting between uh you know, clandestine and human, right? Which is again, again, a parallel between Pakistani and Indian. Um, which, yeah, and it also like you know takes like the time to talk to us about history and teach us about history. You know, oh, um, one of the best things about the show is how much yeah. I learned. Like yes. there's so much things I didn't know, and it's like, absolutely oh, that's a fun fact. I didn't know that was a thing. Absolutely, the partition yeah. is wild um like there is a <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna go into it but the, uh, you know look into look into i think he's i think it was general Mountbatten. um like you know mm. he was this uh british obviously this british kind of like general um like or higher up sort of like guy he's the one who kind of like orchestrated the partition basically india being <clears throat> a continent well a country uh pakistan not even existing and then you know, the separation between Hindus and Muslims and all the Muslims going to Pakistan, Hindus staying in India. Bloody uh, hell. Yeah, it was wild. It was a wild time for the British as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like it was, it, it, it's crazy just how how much time the show took to really teach us that. But like also, I feel like that episode should have been an episode on its own, you know, like with that and not split up and bring us back to Miss mm. uh, Marvel, uh, sort of like closing that portal. I I gotta be honest with you. I struggled with that episode. I really did because look, I understand it's important to the character and the culture and all that. And so I'm not saying it's bad by any means, but it was so wildly different to everything else. And it just kind of made me go. And it was like, while everything was ramping up on the superhero side of things, so it kind of felt like a bit yeah, of a Yeah, the placement of it me. was a bit strange. The placement of it was a bit strange. But have you... Okay, so look, I'm not spoiling anything here. Are you watching Better Call Saul right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, you you're right. The most recent episode. episode um, nibbly? Nibbly? Nippy. So yeah, you're right. So that episode is wildly different to every other episode of Better and Call Saul. It came at a point in the show where you were like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like the mm. last... 
Well, I feel like they wrapped up all the other loose ends and then it's like you got three episodes left. So what's going to happen now? And they've been hitting at this. And I don't know if you have, but like I went on YouTube afterwards and I was like, who's this Jeff guy again? Realized that it's, he's been a character that's established. Yep. So he's changed the actor. Yeah, yeah. Then I noticed that every flash forward Pat Healy. setting yeah. up stuff in this episode. And yep. so it didn't feel as out of place for me. And I think maybe it's because it was still sore. Like, I feel like a lot of this episode, um, time and time and again, um, I wasn't spending a lot of time with Kamala. Maybe if she had more of a presence. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, maybe I'm biased. You know, maybe I've no, got some weird fine. cultural bias. See, I, I like I like when I a when when something on the surface that should be shallow takes the time to teach us about history and go into historical elements and really is accurate about it. Um, so I think maybe that's why I really kind of lynched, like latched onto episode five. Uh, plus, the guy who plays Hassan puts in a great performance when they're at the train he station, does, and yeah. you know he's crying out to her, and I'm just like, oh, good god, kill me. <laughs> yeah, look, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, this is something I, I don't think I've ever said in all my years of podcasting about movies. Is like, um, yeah, I don't know my opinion on this. Like, I haven't really thought about it a lot. I know it wasn't connecting with me as much as the other episodes but I couldn't give you a reason why. Um, maybe it was just my mood that day. Who knows? Um, but um, yeah, look, let's, let's talk about um, so, some other elements of the show. Something very controversial going into the show was her powers. Um, and something I said on the podcast uh, before it even dropped was just like, look, this character has not even existed for 10 years um, in this as Kamala Khan. Um, it's so early in her history. It's like, I'm okay if you change them up a little bit. Her original powers weren't very interesting anyways, I feel. And I'm just going to come out and say it. Her powers in this show are badass. Like, I think they're so much cooler. She's got this, like, the way that she makes these little ramps, it's almost like it's Fortnite the way she runs up. And people were saying, oh, it's like discount Green Lantern. I'm like, nah, it's it's visually different well, it's, enough for me it's to be interesting. Like- in Infinity War, when uh, Doctor Strange and uh, the Guardians are kind of fighting, um, <laughs> yes. Thanos and Doctor Strange does a little platforms for 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 um, for Star Lord, right? Yeah, maybe maybe that inspired it a bit. Look, I think it's also thematically good um, that they made her cosmic, since they want to a bit more cosmic, so they can connect them more to Captain Marvel. Um, and I think the whole concept of the bracelet, which correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I don't think the bracelet's from the comics. But Is the way- it cosmic? Uh, dimensional magic, yeah. I, I mean, like, because it's more ten ringsy, right? So, like, the ten rings, uh, they're not really. I mean, it's, well, it's different in Shang Chi, in Shang Chi, they never actually explain the origin of it, I believe. But I think it's implied it's magic. And I only say cosmic because because she said it felt cosmic. But hmm. you're right. Like, it's not really well explained. But you know what? It's a superhero movie. Right. I'm okay if it's not explained that well. I just want the the cool stuff to do cool stuff. And I think yeah. it's visually a lot more interesting. Um, and, and yeah, so, so I'll, did you have any like thoughts or gripes against that or, or anything? Yeah. Look, I'm not a, I'm not, a, I'm not a purist, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I mean, like I haven't read any of the comic books, so um, I don't have like a pre-existing attachment or anything like that. But like, also when I read about these kinds of things of like, you know, her powers being changed. I mean, like, that's, you know, we've, we've talked about this back when Upcoming Attractions used to be on Minato mean, Feature, right? Like, I mean, that's the nature of adaptations, right? Like, I mean, the, the, def- the definition of adaptation means to change. So, like, you know, what works in one medium yeah. doesn't necessarily work in another. Um, and I know, you know, there's, like, fucking people twi- twittering and tweeting and shit about like oh if you could make fantastic four work mr mr uh reed richards then how do you not fantastic. make Mala work oh, yeah. yeah and i'm just like man like i don't know maybe they just didn't want to have two stretchy characters i don't fucking know but like and also- honestly that's that's a totally fair point like why have two people with the same power you know pretty right. much but like uh, it, it it's just kind of like one of those things of like i don't care as long as it works in the story and it does mm. you know um i agree and and you does. still get the big hands like she's mostly known for having these big hands there are multiple scenes where she her hands yeah, go this big. is this is kind of like one of those those things that i i really get annoyed about with like fan 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 bases <laughs> you know like i mean obi-wan kenobi had so many of these um <sighs> star wars the star wars fan base um yeah. 
you know, that show annoyed me, but like some of the small things that annoyed other people really didn't, I didn't give a shit about. But like, this is absolutely one of those things of like, man, I just like, if it works in the story for me, then that's completely fine. They can, they totally. can it's an adaptation. The, the talking about fan bases, I won't spend too much time on this, but something I found interesting is um, so since uh, leaving Midnight Double Feature, we've done, <laughs> bless you, and we've done things like we, our main focus of upcoming attractions has been TikTok and posting clips to that. And it's a, such a weird platform because you're just exposed to strangers and anyone can comment on your shit. And the weird thing is they're not hearing the full conversation. You're hearing one minute clips. Right. And so what I've realized when it comes to things like Star Wars and Marvel fans, they're technically not movie They want fans. hot takes. They just well, want hot takes. Or, or they, they'll hear hot takes, but they like to yell at hot takes too. And, right. I, I've got, and I'll come at things as a movie fan who will talk about, you know, story structure and character development and all that. And then when I criticize something like that, or people will be like, well, in the comics is this. So blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, okay. You, these 12 year olds make me want to blow my brains out because it's, it's, oh, it's fan base. Your, Ma- your Martin Scorsese to them. You're basically saying they're not cinema, right? That's I, what you're. That's the interpretation. But it's like, no, like I can, and I'll be like, you're not a real Marvel fan. You're not a real Star Wars fan. Like, no, I can, like Star Wars, I can like Marvel and still have criticisms. And uh, the reason I have criticisms is because I love it so much. That's the way I've right. got something to talk to. Um, and the sad thing is too, is like, I feel like a show like Miss Marvel, some people are always just not going to like it. One, because of cultural biases. That's a nice way of saying racism right yeah. now. Um, and then also, I, let's be honest, like these are male dominated fan bases. Right that generally don't click with female, female superheroes. Hero. Yeah. Like everyone this hated. Lowest, this is the lowest watched TV show from Marvel, by the way. It, I'm not surprised. And it's sad because it's one of the best. Uh, the problem is too, is like it's aimed at a younger crowd and, you know, a lot of um, fandoms are like, oh, it has to be mature and right. How come Venom doesn't have all this blood and, and, you know, why aren't we having gore in a Punisher movie? And, and like sometimes that's fair criticism, but, like, not everything has to be dark and gritty and serious. Sometimes Well, not everything needs to be fun. the same, right? I mean, like, not yeah. everything. So people, I guarantee you, people are going to riot when Daredevil is not the same as Daredevil Netflix. Um, and they've already come out and said that this is a different daredevil than the one we've seen on the Netflix show. They already said that like, I think two days ago or something. So like what works for one, again, one adaptation doesn't really necessarily work for another adaptation, especially when they're trying to fit it into this interconnected universe. But Mm. yeah, I'm really curious to see how daredevil goes because on one hand, I feel like Disney may want to try and make it as similar as Netflix show as possible. Um, just because of, uh, you know, making that fan base happy. You know, the same reason why they're doing X-Men 97. But uh, on the other hand, it's like if they want to create a connected uh, cinematic universe, the tones have to be able to fit at some level. And, you know, that's why Venom and Morbius aren't, they, they won't let them connect to the MCU because, one, they feel like they're made in 2006, and, two, like the quality of character characters and, and, and writing is not the same. And, and so if Daredevil is going to connect to the rest of the cinematic universe, they, they're going to need to make some changes. And and, I, and that's the other thing. It's like, that's why I'm worried about De- uh, Deadpool 3. It's like, I feel like they, they've said they've made it R, but I feel like it's going to be really standalone. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. They, they're doing all sorts of weird multiverse stuff now uh, and making things you think wouldn't work, work. So so we'll see. Uh, let's get back to the show, to, to Miss Marvel, though. Um what else is there to reflect on? Uh, okay. The big hot topic that people all talk about is the whole mutant element. Uh, I feel like we have to mention mutants or people or the comments will be like, how come you don't talk about mutants? Um, do you have any particular take on it's that? It's the same, uh, the same take as her powers. I mean, again, yeah. adaptation, um, but also, isn't this a bit more interesting than her being an inhuman? <laughs> like, isn't this like, I mean, this, this, uh, you know, you can be mad at it because it's Kamala Khan being the first mutant in the universe that's confirmed to be a mutant. But like, I mean, it, it, it's, it's interesting to see it from what 
from how like how this is going to affect her character moving forward. Mm. I think you know. Yeah. And who like, who well, else in her family is a mutant? That's I mean, if it is genetic, you know. Yeah. So I know in the comics she was an inhuman, and the creators originally wanted to make her a mutant. But Marvel said no because of the right. rights with Fox. And so She's Inhumans- supposed to be a mutant all the time, the yeah. entire time. So, so it's kind of worked out. And Inhumans have always stood in as a, we don't have mutants, so these are the replacement mutants. But Kevin Feige hates Inhumans. So um, it's kind of nice we can sweep Inhumans under the rug and have this as a backdoor intro to mutants. Um, Do you reckon Kevin Feige does hate Inhumans? Because... I- I mean, he's put one of them in his movies already, so I don't know. Well, I, I think Kevin Feige, so. I think, hates Inhumans, but he loves um, Easter eggs and and making fans happy. So he, uh, so I think that's why that happens. But that's also, I believe, at the same time, Marvel saying Inhumans aren't. We're not going to see them again. I think because the only time we've seen Inhumans was that terrible TV show, which was meant to be a movie, and the second Kevin Feige. Um, had no one to answer to. He switched it from a movie to a TV show, which had like zero dollar budget. Well, and then- um, well, actually, actually, uh, from what I from what I listened to, to just recently, like a podcast, um, I think Feige was all for making it a movie. Uh, but the uh, God, who's the other guy? There was a, there was another guy. Um, um, I forget. He's in charge of the toys and shit. Yes, um, yeah, that guy. Yeah, you know who I'm thinking about, but um, and he's he's known for being cheap as well. He kind of like lost a so my, my so Kevin Feige kind of like lost a sort of like a um a, an argument with him back when Kevin Feige didn't have that much pull sort of thing. So um, you know, this other guy, and oh god, it's killing me that I don't remember his name. Um, <laughs> is it Bob or Bill? I feel like it's a really generic name. Um. Look, my understanding was the situation was, so he was in charge of Marvel because he, he did, in the 90s, he made a lot of money off the toys and stuff. So Feige still had to answer to him, but Feige went over his head to, I forget the CEO of Disney, and it was like, this guy's making it hard for me to make movies. And so they're great, we'll fuck him off. And then they put him in a whole separate, they made Marvel Studios separate from Marvel. Was it Jeff Loeb? I don't think it was Jeff Loeb. No, right? no, it wasn't. I don't think it was Jeff Loeb. No. Okay. Whatever, I don't think but that's um, it. yeah. Anyway, so look, that uh, that this is all beside the point. So I, yeah. I mean, like my my whole thing is just like, yeah, like I, I I think this is more interesting for the character overall. Totally, totally. Um, any other major plot points or elements that you think are worth um, um touching on outside of the end credit scene, which we can talk about? Um, you know, I think I really I really think overall. The show had a lot of potential, and I think it did. Overall, it did do a great job of delivering us six entertaining episodes. Um, you know, like you gotta, you know, think about like you know, like not not not. <laughs> yes, it does sit within the 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 stature of the MCU, right? And uh, it, but but like it is also introducing us to a char- a new character. Um, and I think great introduction too. Great. Introduction. I think it is a great introduction. You know, I think with the two shows where Marvel have introduced introduced us to new heroes, both Moon Knight and Miss Marvel are, are pretty pretty fucking solid. Like you know, just just in terms of introducing us to the characters. I'm not I'm not saying like plot wise yeah. or anything like that, but like I know who Kamala Khan is now. I know mm. who Moon Knight is now. Like you yeah. know, like his three personalities. And, and what I love about both. Um, the introduction of Moon Knight and Miss Marvel, they were released pretty much back to back in terms of Marvel shows. And they're so different. Like Moon Knight is one of the darker MCU projects we've had so far. Um, and, you know, it's clearly taken influence from like the mummy and, and all sorts of other trippy stuff. And, and uh, Miss Marvel is this complete, like, you know, like the, the little animations and squigglies, it's like Diary of a Wimpy Kid type yeah. stuff, you know? I want to I want to shout out um, these two directors, Adil and Bilal. Um, they directed the first episode and the last episode, and they directed Bad Boys for Life. Um, oh, just got a, so good. They've so just got good. like a, a great energy about them. I think they're also tapped to direct the Beverly Hills Cop remake. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a good choice. I didn't that know that, sense. but th- that'd yeah. be good for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say, speaking of like little animations and stuff, as much as I love them and I think they do great to help separate the show from the rest and it helps capture the tone. Um, 
I feel like halfway through, they just forgot about that stuff. I wish there was a bit more consistent throughout all the episodes. I feel like in the first couple episodes, we had a lot of it. And then it came back in the final episode. In the middle, it was gone. And I I wonder with all the controversy lately about um, Marvel with the VFX studios and how overworked they are, maybe they had to cut down to make make some space for other shows or something. Who knows? But I really wish there's a little bit more of that spread throughout. Uh, but that's a nitpick. That's a, that's such a nitpick. Um, Captain Marvel. I, I was waiting the whole show. I was like, look, Captain Marvel didn't do the best. This is the chance to redeem Captain Marvel. I was hoping she would have a huge presence in this. No, gets the saving it for the Marvel's movie. That's fine. Um, but here's a fun fact. Um, I didn't know she was in this because... I watched the whole show. Oh, you I didn't saw the do what thing. an MCU guy I, does. Well, here's my complaint about a lot of these Marvel shows. Not every episode yeah. has an end credit scene. And but the not, last one would, right? But, Hasn't all the last ones have? Um, yeah, but wasn't the mutant one also an end credit scene? Or is that nah. still part of the thing? No, okay, my bad. It, yeah. Okay, so I think I fast forwarded a bit, must have missed it, and go, oh, okay, there must not be anything. And then literally half an hour before we recorded, I was like, oh, I haven't watched in a few weeks. I might like listen to a podcast or something just to refresh my memory. And like, they're like, oh, and Captain Marvel's at the end. Like, hang on, wait. And I just ran on YouTube. Like, oh, there we go. We get three seconds of Brie Larson in in uh, Kamala's room, which is uh, kind of funny. But I, I wish she had more of a more of a presence to like sort of help redeem the character because I thought her small appearance in um in What If was fantastic. I thought it was the best we've seen Captain Marvel yet fighting Thor. Uh, but what do you think of um what do you think of Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel moving forward? I uh, what do you t- think of that scene? I'm not I'm not particularly on board with Miss with Captain Marvel having a bigger presence in the show. Only because I think the show does what it does succeed in is making Miss Marvel such a sort of like a hero like you know like sorry i should say sorry i was expecting that and wanting that but by the end of the show i will admit i'm glad we didn't have it i love that she was able to stand i love that she got the word marvel from something to do with her culture and not captain marvel dude that that was amazing that that scene on the rooftop might be one of my favorite scenes in the entire show is that accurate is does marvel mean or is it perfect kamal um so kamal Kamal, that's right kamal yeah Yeah. so kamal um look i I don't know because they're speaking urdu which is right a different language to hindi um so yes pakistani speak urdu because it's um the arabic language so okay my bad okay yeah um but like like there is there is some sort of like crossover but i don't really know that um but if that is true that is outstanding um that is awesome yeah because i don't think that's from the original comic but it must have been at least a thought if it all lines up because that's too perfect to be you know that's that's just so perfect it's such a magical moment yeah it's awesome um but yeah look i uh i i i think going forward this this is one of the more exciting post credit scenes i've had in a while just because it sets up a lot of potentially what happens in the marbles um you know mm. w- like and they have confirmed that you know she is swapping time and space like she's in a different place now in the universe uh, when i say she miss marvel so they've kind of like do, did a little bit of swapsy they didn't you know she didn't transform into captain marvel or anything so um it's just going to be interesting to see Kamala be incredibly out of her depths um, moving forward with the Marvel's TV show, uh, the Marvel's movie, sorry. Um, but I, I really, I really can't wait for the scene in the Marvel's when Brie Larson walks down the stairs and into like, has to just like talk to the family. Like I can't, it's like that needs to happen. I, I can't you wait know? for them to meet too. I want Kamala to full on fangirl. That's going to be so amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I will say for the Marvels though, I'm I'm a little, I don't know. Like, I love that they got a new director because I feel like the last two didn't do a great job. But uh, Nia Nia De Costa, I wasn't crazy about Candyman. Um, I think I think visually it was awesome. So I'm curious to see how it does visually. Visually, it was great. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Like, there's there's many moving parts to making a film, and it's a completely different genre. So, so we'll see. Um. Cool beans, cool bananas, cool runnings. Um, <laughs> before we wrap things up, um, 
Is there anything else that you thought was worth uh, bringing up? Um, not particularly. I just, again, just wanted to highlight um, that, you know, this, this was a weird TV show for me just because, well, it was a weird piece of media for me just because, like, I, you know, I was I was able to see the criticism, like the, the stuff that I was critical about, but ultimately I didn't really care. <laughs> like, you know, um, I was... I, I was and am so uh, eager to set my criticism aside just because the characters are really well-rounded, I think. Um, you know, the characters are really solidly written. It's just the like what they're doing and what the plot um, makes them do is a bit shaky. And that's that's fine. Like, you know, I, I kind of like look at this as like more of a, um, a TV show where the characters are just more of a... Um, priority than the story which is which is you know it's fine totally fine i actually prefer um you know st- like like plot like characters like strong characters you know because you know they're the ones that ultimately keep coming like make me keep coming back you know like better call soul you know we don't know the story of better call soul but we keep coming back for the characters right i mean we don't know how it plays mm. out but we keep coming back for the characters so um yeah, this 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 show just absolutely nailed character and setting like no other Marvel TV show has before, um, and I think that is incredible. Um, I think you know having a Muslim centric TV show in a day and age like this is an absolute knockout. Um, I think that's really, um, really, you know, like they're kind of wearing their hearts on their sleeves. Disney are with this show. Mm. Um, and you know whether it's quite virtual, uh, virtue signaling, whatever oh, it is, what it is. But um, hey, I had a great fucking time, man. <laughs> had a great fucking time. Last question, and he, he's there's no way to know the answer to this unless it's been announced. And I don't know, but do you think it's going to get a season two? Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. I, th- I, I I do I do think yeah because I mean because not all Disney Plus shows. Are getting a second season no right yeah no not, not all disney plus shows are getting a second season loki obviously is what if is but um i think there's there's a lot there's a lot of room here to explore this character in this setting more um i don't i don't love that we got the the parents so like the the one arc that i would like to have seen sort of like stretched out a little bit more is the parents mm. um them being a bit more accepting well you know, completely accepting of Kamala's adventures and the fact that she's going to be Miss Marvel. I would have liked to see that fleshed out a little bit more um, and, and explored a little bit more. So, um, you know, we, we're probably going to get more about the bangle. Uh, we're probably going to get more about the, uh, the this other dimension. Um, but I think, I think there's a lot set up for season two, if not the Marvels. So... Yeah. yeah. Moving forward, I'd love to see a lot more of the red daggers. I thought they were really cool. Um, or whatever's left of them, I guess. Um, I'm interested about this whole gin concept, if that's going to be explored more. And and I think if they want to do dive more into the parents, it could be really a good source of comedy if they want to like dive into like, hey, what's it like to be the parents of a superhero that still lives at home? Like that could be a lot of really Committee. Like just imagine like the Marvels opens up with her dad uh, fixing the door that she broke when she swapped out with Captain Marvel, you know, little things like that. But Zoheb, thank you so much for joining us today here at Upcoming Attractions. It's You're always welcome back. Anytime, my friend, you see a show or movie and you're like, Matt, I want to talk about it. I'll get you right on right on here. We, we, I totally do miss appreciate you. that, man. Thank you. I, I do miss you, my friend. Um, and yeah, and as for everybody else, um, as I said before, uh, we'll be bringing um, a few more episodes over the next coming weeks or so, um, a bit from the vault. So you'll hear us talk about some movies that have already come out. Um, and you can just be, you can laugh at us when we're wrong and you can agree with us when we're right. Cause we'll be predicting films that haven't come, that hadn't come out yet, but they have been out. And that's what it is when you have a vaulted episodes. Um, as for now, I know I seem fine, but I have a I have a surgery coming up, so I'm I, I can't commit to consistently podcasting at the moment. But in a few months, things should be back to normal. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your patience and shouts to everyone who's supporting us. If you want to help support the show, um, the best way to do it is by just. 
following us on social media. Give us a like on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram, we're really trying to push out the reels more now. And as I'm sure a lot of you guys already have us on TikTok, follow us there. Um, be sure to give us a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify. Do you know Spotify? You can review podcasts now. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I just saw it recently. That's cool. Give us five stars on Spotify if you're feeling generous. Anyways, I'm Matt. That's Zoheb. We love you very much. Thanks for joining us. Laters.